Okay, so now you're going to have two clover leaves connected by one of the chains. Just going to finish my knot. And then for the second clover leaf chain, what you're going to do is tie it and flip it so you can see where you're working. You're going to make the first stitch. I always have that funny. The first stitch. Sides for a second. For the front half and the second half, back half. Front half, back half. Okay, now that you have for the second chain, you're going to make three stitches. You're going to join this chain to the first loop of the chain that you just made, that you had just made before the second clover leaf. So we're going to join those two, and then pull it through. And so that counts as the first half. You make the second half. Make three stitches. One and two. Once you get used to it, you just end up counting the the front half as half a stitch and the back half as half a stitch. So you just kind of get used to just seeing it that way. So you count the two as one stitch. And that's the one for the loop because we're going to make a middle loop. Okay, we're going to make three stitches. One two, three. We're going to make another open loop for now because when we get done they're all going to join together. Or at least the front and the last loop are going to join together. That middle one is just going to stay open. If you're inclined to do beads, that middle loop is a perfect one for it. One, two, and three. And the nice thing with putting beads on here because you can put them on that little bit of space when you have them already threaded on here and you still ultimately have to do that stitch at the end of it so it keeps them in place and then you don't lose your stitch count at all so we're going to pull that through and close it and then we're going to tie it and then I always end up flipping my work so now that you've completed the second clover leaf you're going to use those instructions and you're going to make four more of these so that you have a total of six. So now what I've done is I followed the instructions from to make the second clover leaf and just made let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and I've started the sixth one, but I've stopped for the moment so I can show you how to join the very last rings together and explain a little bit more for the chains. So I'm at my uh, sixth clover leaf, and I've already got the first ring that's joined to the previous one. I've made the second ring, which is the larger one with, that has the three open loops, the join loop here, and then this one will become a join loop because I'm going to make the small ring for this set half where my needle is because it's currently missing one. So I'm going to start making the stitches. Go on one and two and three. Okay. I'm going to tighten that. I'm going to grab my crochet hook. We're going to join this to the last loop of the second ring of the last clover leaf. And by now it just makes it easier because you're just you've been doing make three, make a loop, make three, make a loop. And and or make three, join it to the previous loop, make three stitches. So that's the back half of the joining loop. Okay, we're going to go one stitch, two stitch three stitch. And this is where this differs from the alternate form of tatting, which is the shuttle tatting, which I am not good at. Because on this one, you just manipulate what you're working on. And if you have to, you can even pull this all the way through. I'll just show you. If you ever get tight on spacing, you can go ahead and just pull that. Move what you're working on. And then what you're going to do, you'll get your crochet hook. You'll pull it through the loop that you're working on pull the string through and then pull this here pull this taut so that it acts as if you had left everything on the needle itself just kind of convenient when you're working on certain things so make the back half and it gives you a little bit more wiggle room sometimes and stitch one two and three and we're going to just join this one because I did that so that I can move the needle with what I'm doing because we're going to join it to the last loop down here and then pull it towards you and then on the needle and pull it through 
And this is exactly how it would have looked if I hadn't taken it off the needle down there. So that's the back half of the joining stitch. And then do one, two, and three. And then what we're going to do is we're going to close this one. Since I have this off of the needle down here, I'm just going to pull it through like you do with a chain. Pull it taunt. Except what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop it through down here. So I'm going to pick up that tail chain, or the tail string they originally worked through, pull it through as I disconnect myself, and that will make the loop there as well. So just a different way of joining it when you run out of space, or if you get a little too close in quarters for your comfort. Okay, we're going to make the knot to tie that there. So now we still have this gap right here, so we're going to make a chain to join these together, and then I'll show you how to tie in the ends. Make sure that's nice and taut. Okay, so we're going to flip this so that you have what you're working on functionally in the back of what you're doing. Because you're going to make the stitch back here for the first half, the second half, and you're going to make three of these, like we've done for every other chain. Okay, so now we're going to join this, the part that's attached to the ball, to the very first loop here. To do that, just get your crochet hook through the loop. Okay, so we're going to join it and we're going to pull it through, pull it taunt, make the back half of the loop, make three because we're leaving that middle one open, two and three. So now we're going to make the loop with the loop stitch. So that's the loop stitch and then make the front and the back of one, two, front and back of three. Okay, now comes the really fun part. You're going to move this just a little bit so you can see where you want, because you want to connect the, where the ball, the string from the ball is to this very first loop in order to join the very last, to make the very last loop into the very first chain here. You can kind of pull this, since it's thread, it's very manip manipulatable. Pull that through towards you, and then go up, and then make the back half of the stitch, and do three. One two and three. So now we're going to pull this off of the needle. So I know it looks kind of funny, but I promise it will work. So we're going to pull this straight up, kind of bunches a little bit. So I kind of flip this so that this is that way, but you can also just stick it on the table, pull up to make sure that's nice and taut. And then you're going to make your loop, or your, not your loop, your knot at the top of this. Make it nice and tight. And then what we're going to do is, since that is just kind of awkward, we'll get the needle and we're going to put it through any part of the, really, at the knot of that very first clover leaf, the very big one, because it's technically the bottom stitching. So you have the loops at the top and you're just pulling it right next to where that chain is and you can go through these. And since it's a needle function, you just sew it in there. So you don't get caught on yourself. Pull it through. If you need to, just manipulate it and kind of kind of pull it this way and then push that down. Because it will just go in the direction of where the thread's going. And you make another knot. I usually do a couple just to make sure that it's okay. Oop, and that came off the needle. So now is an okay time to go ahead and cut it from the ball. Put that over there. And then just make another knot. You can make as many as you want, just keep them small. So two's pretty good, just pull it a little tight. A method for hiding the threads that's going to result in a nice, convenient, permanent loop to hang it on a Christmas tree. Which actually would help if I remember to thread this first. Haha, -ha. success. That's one of the problems with using the metallic stuff is it it's a little funny. So now that we've got our good set of knots at the base of the loop, what we're going to do is we're going to just sew this in. So you're going to stick it under the stitches that you've made, but it's going to be over the um, underline. Well, it's like you've got stitches on top of the stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to work in that little space in between the first set of stitches and the string that they're all around. Don't know a better way to explain that. So I'm going to stick it in and just kind of weave it through. 
and then get a f get it a few. Usually, where you see the spacing, it's a good idea to just go ahead and go up through those. And then go this way and go under and through. And so we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it up through this top one here, because each of these rings have the three loops at the top. We're just gonna come out through that middle one. So this one is not going to get knotted. It's going to sit like that. And what you can do is you can just cut it at that point and it will hide it and it will look beautiful. But because we're making the ever so industrial loop, we're just going to keep hiding the threads on the other side. Put that through. See how it's still through the stitches because it's just in the space in between the exterior stitches. And then re-thread this. And then you can just pull it through. And then go back through. And whenever you're selecting thread, you want to make sure you find a thread that fits the bottom of the needle real well. If you use too small of a thread with a big needle, your tension's going to be off. You've hit, uh, sewn the tails into it. All you have to do is just get this, make a knot at the top, and make a cheesy knot because it's not long enough to make a nice butterfly knot. Just make that a couple of times. Make sure that you're not going to lose any of the thread from the knot, and pull that taunt again. Just cut off. The part that looks frayed. And ta-da! You have a cloverleaf tatted snowflake complete with its own holder.